All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Strong Fit episode podcast, episode 194, I think. One step closer to 200. So today, I, uh, someone asked me about if I, we were going to talk about like your version of the protocol. And we did a bit last time, but I guess we could go into it, uh, you know, like one step at a time, like uh, to show like w how we adapted the um, protocol to you. Because it's, it's completely different than the way I do it. Mm -hmm. We're going to explain why, but also like, because I think people were impressed as I was with the results you got from the fasting stuff. Uh, we also have to explain that you gain muscle, but that's, it's not just a fasting. It's not fasting that makes you gain muscle. It's the <laughs> way you train, the template, the conditioning template, yeah. the way you do it, and the amount of work that you put toward that, that is making you gain muscle. The fasting and the protocol is helping, but it's not the fasting that makes her gain muscle let's be honest like she um like we have a template the conditioning template that is out and janina is down by thursday yeah. right like I, it's two workouts a day six days a week and she's finishing it by thursday morning which means she needs workouts from me from thursday friday and saturday so she's doing the template twice so you understand <laughs> Right. No, yeah. but so so people also, get, yeah. like get where and then right now like on uh, last week she did uh, a 12 minute imam on the back squat with 100 kilos for two reps for 12 minutes. So 24 reps at 100 kilo back squat in 12 minutes. That's where she's at. So well, I understand that because someone like uh, commented even like oh yeah you can have her body for 500 dollars. No, you cannot. Well, I thought that was a bit cheap. I was like, well, five hundred dollars. I think I'm uh, right. No, but you know what you were saying. I know, yeah. I know. Of but course, the like, and I got diet thing and right. I got to tell you, you don't have her genetics. <laughs> you don't. Like she has the cra She's one of the most talented <laughs> athletes I've ever trained. It's just Thank what you, you think. I want a baby with that one. I mean, like <laughs> we're gonna have world's strongest man <laughs> babies real fast. But it is, uh, she's ridiculously gifted. So. No, you're not going to get that. But what we want out of all this is that you get your form of the protocol. It makes you get to your potential, makes you get your progress, makes you deal with anxiety because that helped Janina. And that you don't see that physically, but there's, there's a propensity to an anxiety that is very uh, large that she got to quiet down. That's why the fasting that we're going to talk about this. Like there's a number of things you don't see out of the protocol that is just not showing in her abs is the Le the signals from the stomach, the emotional control, the uh, much less anxiety. There was a lot of things associated with all this. So let's go one step at a time. We're going to start. But how did you eat when we met before you started the protocol? Because let me explain that <laughs> when I explained to her the protocol, her answer was, I'll never do that shit. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm Dutch, which means we eat a lot of bread. Like it was basically bread in the morning, bread at lunch, and then bread before bed, and then dinner was usually pasta or something like this. Right? So Is that just bread? Because I remember it differently. <laughs> no, bread with anything on it, like can you explain? Butter, uh, can you, or no, can you explain what what, uh, what was that that you ate before you went to bed at, at night? Oh yeah, before I went to bed, I would have bread with a little bit of butter, just like slightly slightly coated with butter and then a lot of like sprinkles like we have something that's called hagelslag and you have black and white hagelslag which is yeah, sprinkles. like white chocolate and, sprinkles and yeah oh yeah sprinkles exactly that's the word so she would take bread yeah. put very little butter because she's lactose intolerant and uh, put a shit ton of uh, sprinkles on it before she went to bed you know what I also ate a lot was bread with uh, like there's a cookie that's called speculas and then on bread it's so good Oh, yeah, no, the I don't like it anymore. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Speculas, um, you know the speculus that they have in the... Remember the, the old days of the webcast podcast with speculus? That's what she was putting on bread to eat. <laughs> yeah, but also a lot of like grilled cheese on bread or egg on bread. That's what I would do. Um, I would usually eat like yogurt with like... Bread. Bread in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so it was that. And, and what's a lot funny of like is. Uh, bami, like, st like rice. No one speaks recipe, Dutch. Like most yeah. people are in the US. Yeah, right, no and one rice speaks recipes Dutch. and stuff like that. Right. Mostly like that. Yeah, protein, not that much. Uh, protein, a little bit. I like chicken. And that was that, it. That was, yeah, that was it, right. And vegetables. I like vegetables. Yeah, she had the veggies and bread. Um, 
So didn't like potatoes because she grew up on the farm for a few years and now hates it. <laughs> but that's more like that's another problem. Um, so that's when we met, and I was like, mm, hmm, "How's your anxiety level?" She was like, "What anxiety?" <laughs> I'm like, "That one." Um, and so yeah, of course she would crash, but then wake up in the middle of the night as usual. What's interesting is back then she weighed 66 kilos. Yeah, no, I was even when, okay. when we met. When we met, she was actually super skinny at 62, 63 yeah. because it was right after the pandemic closed the sprints. So she was just running like 30, 40 minutes long distance, not lifting. So she was very, very fit, but a bit on the skinny side. 62 yeah. is too light for her. Yeah. So before that, I would eat that and uh, I would train sprint and then no, sorry, the, the dog just pissed on the one of the <laughs> furniture. <laughs> there you go. I'm like, yeah, there you go. He's marking his territory all over the house. That's awesome. Anyway. It's um, that face, huh? Yeah. But, um, um, so, yeah, I would, do, uh, I would eat that. And I'll, I would be quite skinny. And I, I did track. So I trained a lot still. Well, well, you were not doing that much track then. Cause when I met you, because oh, of yeah, the when pandemic. I, yeah, so when I met you, I ate that. And I usually didn't eat that much during the day. Yeah. And then just mostly carbs and a lot of like interval conditioning training and right so she was, was 62 it. and just so you know i like her much better at 66 with muscle she wants to go to 70 with muscle i'll be happy as well so yeah. if you think she looked better back then fuck you because we had and that's the end of the podcast because there's a few things that are about positivity when women carry muscle that i find interesting and it's not about men judging it's about women judging anyway yeah, that's, uh, that's another yeah, we'll, I, we'll touch on it at the end yeah, um we'll so we get together, you tell me, I'll never fucking do that thing. No, get I away from me. So I was like, sure, as usual, right? I'm like, do you do it if you want to? If you don't want to do it, you don't. Well, I know. I was like, I, I'm Dutch, I eat bread. So that was a bit of, you know. And, and chocolate sprinkles. I didn't want to yeah. give up on those either. No. And, so then, and then I started, we started living together and I started cooking dinner. But protocol-wise. So I started with uh, protocol dinners at first That's right because i wouldn't started. i wouldn't eat rice or anything you guys know on the protocol so she started cooking large amounts of proteins and since we she she started to make us have dinner as a family the three of us which i thought was a great idea because before that it wasn't the case um she's a much better parent than i am let's be honest <laughs> uh, but true. so you, we started to have dinner together and so you know shit ton of meat is on the table so i let her get some rice on bread but she started naturally getting a little bit more protein at dinner at least yeah at dinner right. and i would change my my bread with chocolate sprinkles for the casein with yogurt with right so yogurt. she was curious because she started to hear me talk about it wasn't the physical aspect that got her interested in the protocol no. it was the anxiety stuff the sleep and anxiety so she had no problem falling asleep because you know so much carbs adrenaline drops down you get the, uh, that whole effect but then middle of the night she would wake up just like i used to and just overall not sleep that well or pass out to a point where she would sleep 12 hours but more like freeze mode so there were two things either not sleeping well and then having massive nightmares or stuff like that or just pass out for 12 hours and wake up the next day wondering where she was yeah and it was also uh because we started to go to bed way earlier because yep. we were living together and we would wake up a lot earlier too so that changed a lot of my sleeping habits because there was a time where i went to bed and where i would wake up which i normally never had right. so that changed everything for me and then when on I started, a regular basis yeah on a regular basis so my sleep started to improve a lot and when i was waking up so much more calmer especially the first few hours of the day where i was super relaxed still i was like ah oh, that's enjoyable and then right. then i started to, to but that, that's a very good point though because you you have to understand the proto i did not put her on the protocol right she asked me so that's a very important part because yeah. a lot of you know people ask how do i get people on the protocol you don't they ask um and so all i did was i did my thing and then she started to go oh and because i started to regulate sleep so much which is still the best way to help people get on the protocol is sleep because because we went we ate a certain way and then because she ate so much protein with me that means she had less bread and sprinkles because she wasn't hungry anymore and then we went to bed closer to dinner then suddenly she doesn't have the bread and sprinkle wakes up the next morning more rested and the first two hours of the day are relaxed and there's no anxiety then he comes back but what got her on the protocol is that is regulation of sleep and lowering of the anxiety and then the the signals 
That's what got on the protocol. Not the food aspect, not the I want to be leaner, none of that. No. And this is never what has driven the protocol forward. It's never been the physical stuff. It's always been the signals, emotional control and sleep. And what it was also before uh, the protocol, I didn't have a specific way of eating. I never had like micros or anything like that. So I was like... Macros, not micros. Macros. Micronutrients, not micronutrients. Macros. That's a French accent. It sounds the same, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I was like, uh, yeah, I want to... When I woke up so differently, I was like, oh, is that the effect food can have? Because I didn't know right. anything about nutrition necessarily. That's not nutrition. Uh, that's the relationship between food yeah. and mental health. Yeah, but I, I and mean, honestly, I that's, very no, that's not talked about much. Yeah. Yeah, so when I noticed that, I was like, oh, cool. And because we were doing so many things together, I made you food. And I was like, let yep. me just make the same thing for me because I'm lazy in that well, sense. Well, you're not lazy, you but you like structure. So suddenly yeah. I was doing something. You were like, yeah, it's worth trying. Yeah. But again, I think you thought it was worth trying because you saw the results in the morning. So, yeah. okay, so that's how the protocol started. And Dinner. I recovered a lot better from training right okay. so we start with dinner right that change food before dinner that change the next morning out of that she sees the performance mentally out of uh, lesser anxiety and then she starts to see recovery from sprinting ah so she's like all right so let's push it forward and then you started to go full protocol now yeah. we had an issue is that i eat a lot of cheese and dairy product and you are lactose intolerant mm -hmm. so that was a problem how was i going to make you have fats during the day and not carbs so mm -hmm. she started to drop the bread, but we had to put fats into it. Turns out, um, and I've seen that time and time again, women cannot handle nearly as much fat eating as men. Yeah. It's, so we, it we seems, or maybe, maybe it's not a men-women thing, but it seems some people cannot tolerate as much fats. Yeah, I, but I always have it. I, I don't like anything with fat, yeah. like avocado, butter, uh, right. cheeses. We try all this and we just couldn't get there. Like, so she because could, also, uh, yeah. I, I, if I don't like something, I do not eat it. So that's... That's for sure. So then we had to find something that we like. Then we started with salad, which was nice because it was a sort of... Right. So um, she, at the time, she was violently uh, lactose intolerant, which is not yeah. the case anymore. Now she can have dairy products. She just doesn't like them. But she can have them. It doesn't have the same inflammatory uh, no, you know, reaction no, like really nausea well. and then the skin. She, yeah. she would break out a lot out of that because she has a history of acne. So not eczema, not uh, psoriasis, but she whenever she reacts strongly to something, you can always see it because she breaks out. Mm -hmm. Face first and then the back. It's always the same, right? So it's a bit like an eczema uh, breakout, but just mm -hmm. from acne, which I, th I feel uh, must be like the same type of anti -infl uh, the inflammatory response. Sorry. Yeah. So now she can have dairy product, but which is much better than before. You just don't like it. So we still have to get lunch and breakfast and things. So we start with salads, uh, salad. Um, with a little bit of cheese at first, but eventually we took out the cheese because you were not doing that good. So we kept the veggies in, then we tried eggs and fruits. Egg, eggs first, no, I think. And, and we also had breakfast with yogurt, goat yogurt. Right. So we, we had, um, uh, right, right. So we started the breakfast, that's true, with goat yogurt and fruits. Yeah. And you did, you did okay with that? Yeah, and because uh, we did a little bit of honey on it, it was really good actually. At the time we were. Yeah, and and we, we, we went full chocolate. circle. Yeah. 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 We went full circle on that. And so that was working really well. A little bit of honey, fruits, some goat yogurt, so some fats, a little bit of dark chocolate, some fats. That's going to be interesting because we went full circle exactly on that. So, um, and, and the then lunch was, was the salad with... The, the salad. But what I noticed is actually was doing better with fruits. And that's something mm -hmm. I noticed, I don't want to say in women, but it's been mostly women that, have, that do better when they have more fruits, less fats. Yeah. But you're also on the nervous side very driven, very structure-based, anxiety can go fairly high. So I would have thought that lowering her baseline a bit with using the fats was a good idea, not on the contrary. She needs to do well, she actually needs more of a pep. So we started to up the fruits a bit. Yeah, so when we, we went from the, the breakfast stayed the same until we moved to Brazil and then we yeah. switched lunch to... Um, some eggs, we some tried. Eggs. Yeah, some egg, some salad and some eggs. And that was that was better. Fat-wise, I still think that's my best lunch if I would have any fat. 
Yeah, if she wants fat, it's it would be eggs. it would be eggs. So I don't do well on eggs at all. It puts me to sleep. Two eggs me and I'm, he falls, I fall asleep. By the way. Uh, so that's the problem with we go back to the the idea of the circadian rhythm is if we start to have protein. Prote uh, eggs have a lot of fats, but they're going to count as protein for the fact that they make you sluggish and sleepy. I don't have that problem if I have organ meat. For example, I can have the cured ham. I can have a shit ton of that and it does not make me sluggish. Whereas eggs, two eggs, I'm out. So, um, they, and I don't want to be out during the day. So there's really where the whole idea of fasting came about. Is that um, she's having lunch with salad and eggs, but have that dip feeling tired in the middle of the day and starts to hate it. And yeah. so naturally we started to go, we kept the fruits going and then more and more you hated that dip during the day. Yeah, and that was also because I, um, because of CrossFit, right? So I, I started right. to, right. when we got to Brazil, every, a lot of things changed. So we had uh, right. acai similar to the, to the breakfast we had before, but then we would train. All right, let's and go over this. So we changed breakfast to acai, which is not yogurt and fruits. Acai is a shit ton of carbs yeah. and a lot of calories and some guarana, which is technique. Well, it's a form of sugar. It's not sugar because it's still uh, uh, fruit based, but it's a lot of carbs. So we get that in the morning because it tastes so good, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. And then we go train on that. Yeah, and we go train on that and we did mostly powerlifting then at first. And yep. uh, you know, the, the heavy weight would put me to sleep. Then I would have yep. the eggs. I would just be like two hours, I would just knocked out. Yeah. And that I started to hate because then by two, my day would start almost yeah. again. But then yeah. at two, what, what are you going to do at two? You know yeah. what I mean? So uh, I would hate that. And especially when I did CrossFit and I, I had my first session and I got so much energy out of it. And then because of the Drop eggs, it, it Drop dropped again. completely. Yeah. Um, so there is where I had started to have an issue with, with that. With uh, eating well, and then the more she ate, the more digestion kicks in, the more tired she felt. But at that time, we also started to see that the powerlifting template, my template wasn't working that well for her. She wasn't getting that much stronger out of the effort, but it was starting to thicken you in a, a bit in the wrong places you didn't like. And again, it wasn't making you that strong and you mm -hmm. didn't like it that much. It didn't give you energy no. out of it, M made you mostly go in freeze. Yeah, and it was too much pressure on the lifts and stuff like that. It was just, it was, it, you could tell within three weeks, we knew it just wasn't working. So we started to go, okay, I told her like, look, like, I don't think this is the right way of doing it. We, we did it for like three months and then three months. Was, yeah. And I was like, I don't think it's a right, I don't think it's the right way for you. It's working, but not the way knowing your genetics and your drive and everything. I'm like, I don't think it's the correct form. So then at that time I was like, all right, why don't we try? the other side of it, which means let's go toward uh, conditioning. Like I have plenty of examples of women that got very, very strong doing uh, Invictus programming, CrossFit type thing. So I was like, why don't we start doing uh, CrossFit, the strong fit way, just like I was doing with Invictus. And then we started putting Janina on that. And right away, her body, her body started to kick in, like the energy came back up. Well, and it's also like, I love lifting, but I was so used to being extremely passionate about sprint that it was really hard to find. I was in that powerlifting time, I was scared that I was not sure if I was going to love it as much. And because the last years of sprinting, I didn't like it as much. I really wanted to do something I loved. And then I, I liked lifting, but I felt like something was missing, like the dynamics mm -hmm. of it was yep. missing. Uh, what I like a lot, the moving and the running and everything. So when we started, to do when I started to do the CrossFit and um, the CrossFit th started to do CrossFit. I went around here in the neighborhood to all the, the gyms. By the way, we'll do a podcast on the conditioning template for Janina as well. So don't worry about it. We're just covering it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we can also yeah. leave it for, for that. No, no, no. Just keep going because we'll go in depth into it. Yeah. Yeah. So I started to try out all the boxes in the around our house. To well, see. plus I made you do workouts here. I start, I remember yeah, I, f I yeah. made you do a few workouts well, first. Well, but that was yeah. the thing. You were like, you have to do all the girls first. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll do that. So I would go in the morning. That's how it started because mm -hmm. I would go in yeah. the morning to test out the gym before I drop Yaya off to school or right after. Then I get home and it's still early in the morning. I'm like, I can do some more. I need to do all the girls. So let me just start with two, three girls here. Not soon. <laughs> that sounds a bit weird. I mean, two. Uh, two. I, I would not necessarily complain. 
I mean, with the Are girls' workouts, yeah. the CrossFit girls They call workouts. it nasty girls? The nasty girls' workouts. Yeah, so if you do two, three nasty girls a day, at home it's even better. <laughs> yeah. so well, and you're saying it, I'm just repeating <laughs> what you're saying. Stop. So I would start doing that, and then I was like, when I ate the eggs, I didn't like it, so I started eating eggs less and less um, l later and later on the day, because I was like, oh, I, I want to do this and this and right. this first. So that's the key and we need to I explain. So to you, s you didn't want the eggs because you wanted to keep your energy constant, so yeah. you could train three times a day. Yeah. yeah. So then I was like, oh, but at some point I, keep, I, I sometimes just forgot to make the eggs, because I would make lunch for you, go train a bit more, and then I would be like, ah, oh, I don't feel like it, so I will eat a banana. Mm -hmm. And then we, I started to just eat fruits during the day. Um, so I say in the morning and then eat for more and more fruits. Then we went to, um, well, fast forward a few months because I did that for a few months. So now she's doing changes. the template full, uh, full blown and she's yeah. seeing physically the, the changes. The changes. So I started to go, I found a box that I liked, turned to the classes there and, and started to do the Invictus workouts, right? So more and more training and more and more fruits, which I liked a lot. And then we went to travel where I didn't like the fruits, actually. Yeah. And there was no breakfast because I didn't want to mm -hmm. change. And we didn't have acai, so. Yeah, there was no acai. And that's how I got to fasting, basically. Right, but the, the key with all this is the food was, uh, be, uh, was lowering the quantities anyway, more and more, because she found a sharpness out of not eating too much. Right. And so naturally, that came to fasting, saying, well, I could try not eating, since I much rather not eat than have the wrong food. And what she discovered, so every time she was in a fasting period of not eating too much, she was much sharper mentally and she had the energy she wanted to train all day, yeah. which was really the driver toward the fasting idea. So uh, we didn't put Janina on fasting in order to achieve the results that they say fasting will give you. It's not to get leaner, it's not for the no. health benefit or stuff like that. It was for the mental benefits. Yes. Janina was much, much shar sharper and had the energy she wanted to have throughout the day to train the way she wanted. That's why we went toward fasting. Yeah, because um, what I was looking for in my mental state was a sharpness for the CrossFit workouts because I want to be a badass. So I want to train a lot mm -hmm. because I need to learn a lot still because I'm a rookie. So I want to have enough energy that I, um, that I understand what I need to do and how I need to do it. And at the same time, I don't want to have that heavy feeling in my stomach yeah. because I like to be fast and, and all of those things. So it started with that and then I was al I'm, what I'm always I'm looking for was the calmness, which um, mm -hmm. what I had from the eggs, but it was just too much. It too calm. Yep. Too calm. And I stayed in that state a little bit too long because I liked that calmness so much. Right. And when CrossFit came about and I started to, to train the way I like to train, I didn't feel like I had to calm myself down. I was just much more calm because I liked what I was doing. Right. And that's what the, what the fasting... There's a lesson there too, by the way. But yeah. Because it was not something... And I made that mistake with sprinting is that I needed to sprint and I don't need to do CrossFit. I want to do mm -hmm. CrossFit. So for now. For now. But the needs, I don't, um, I don't, I like the way everything is right now. So I don't need to change anything. To really? have the fat to I calm yourself. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and that's what fasting showed me more and more is that I see better what I want. Because out of yourself yeah, yeah exactly but so again the sharpness of the fasting was a very important part so let's go over what so we mean by fasting yeah. yeah so let's go over yeah. this so um what do we mean by fasting so a very important part is dinner still so what i like about the fasting the way we're doing it is that the dinner became an event because you uh, you grace you you have uh, uh, fruits during the day we're going to explain why but really what it means is that you have to have a big dinner and so dinner is an event, is, a, is an experience, because you eat for about an hour straight, right? So it's still proteins and veggies, that's all. Mostly, we actually took out a lot of the veggies mm -hmm. and just so that you can have as much protein as you can, which is uh, working very well. But then that makes you eat a lot of protein, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, um, yeah, the dinner needs to be what I, what I feel like eating, first of all. Right, that's important. And I want to have a, a nice, calm dinner, like no, mm -hmm. no stress. screens, yeah. no 
Right. There's no stress. So you can focus on the on, on the food. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, by the way, extremely important. And I think that idea of having uh, dinner as an experience, as an event, is a very important thing because I find myself in the same situation when it comes to training, where my strength days are the focus points, focal points of my week, where all the bodybuilding, all that stuff is just stuff I do so I can get to the, the heavy part where suddenly my mind is uh, laser sharp. And I feel it's a little bit the same thing with dinner in that aspect where all day you're just getting ready for dinner in that sense. And that makes that moment an experience and you can focus on, well, on things that will put you in the parasympathetic side, by the way, the, the, it'll make your digestion effective because you're going to chew your food, you're going to taste it, you're going to have socialization, you're going to get ready for dinner over 30 minutes because it's so important, you put an importance into it. Yeah. You don't do things because they're important, things are important because you do them. When you start to place that much importance on dinner, it becomes that much more important to you and you start to make the the small efforts that you need to make to digest better and all that thing. So I, I think it, to me, it makes complete sense. Yeah. That being said, you, you don't not eat during the day. Yeah, so um, what I do is I basically start the day with just water and, and a coffee, a little bit of coffee in the morning. With some honey? But some, uh, yeah, so just, I just drink water and stuff like that until like... No, but it's coffee and honey. It's important people know because it's not a true fast. And I'm sure people will comment, well, it's not fasting. Okay, it's not fasting. We call it strong fit fasting. There you go. Strong fasting. Strong fasting. I like it. And so you have coffee, some honey, and then you'll have some fruits during the day. Yeah. Here and there. Yeah. You, so if I train before 12, I usually don't eat and I just train. But if I would train after 12, 12 ish, 11, 12, something like that. Um, I will have like a banana or something like that before I train mm -hmm. and then I just Which go is off. mostly we're going to try to keep the fruits uh, before training sessions. You have to understand Janina trains three times a day so that means three times fruits and honey. But uh, first of all that's always been within the, uh, within the ideas of the protocol is to keep the carbs for training. Yeah. So that you can promote a uh, nervous system. So that we're still within that. But there's a second reason also like I wanted to have banana during the day. Is that a, a, a point the doctor, like Saladino, was making, uh, which I like, was the idea that if you don't have carbs, you will not produce an insulin spike, which means, in a way, you will make yourself maybe not insulin resistant, but uh, insulin uh, maybe not resistant, but deficient, in the sense of like you are losing the skill of producing and, and handling uh, insulin yeah. production, and you know, and and all, and all that stuff, and. That was a very interesting point that makes sense to me. It's like you're only good at what you do on a regular basis. So you can make yourself insulin resistant by having too much carbs, obviously. But it turns out, I think it's very possible you can make yourself insulin resistant, not quite the same, obviously, but by not having enough carbs in that sense. And him, he was talking about his levels of testosterone going back to normal after uh, putting back honey. So what he was showing is that having a glucose uh, tester, like those 24 hours, is that whatever spike he would get, uh, insulin spike he would get out of fruits and honey, he would always go back to the same level. So therefore, not having elevated uh, glucose level in the blood is what we're shooting for, because that's what will make you actually insulin resistant. So that was a, a very interesting idea, and that's why I keep pushing toward having some carbs here and there during the days to make sure that there is those insulin spikes and stuff. So now the question becomes, is it better to have the insulin spike during training, right? Where you can uh, have as much of that as you want because the heavy, the hard exercise will, will limit insulin production. So maybe we could play with that or having the carbs during the training, have an insulin spike, but that is still within control because of the hard production of uh, of the training and lactate becomes a part of it as well now. Yeah. So I thought I was an because I know that from the nervous system part and everything and I came to the kind of the same conclusion that uh, Dr. Sa uh, Saladino came but him from the purely biochemical part. I still don't like the way they look at it honestly um, because to them everything is a molecule. Like, you know, if you eat this, this molecule is yeah. that. Like, I disagree. To me, that's functional segregation. I think they're still missing important points from uh, functional integration. That's an opinion, not a fact. But um, so 
but I find it interesting that we all ended up in the same place, which is a lot like the Paul Anderson diet. So honey, um, I took it out for a while, just fruits, and then I put it back in. And since then, I've had massive PRs in my lifting. I think the honey is doing uh, a lot of good. Honey is not just sugar. I showed a, a study showing that mice on honey versus mice on sugar were not having the same results. One was very, uh, created a lot of oxidative stress. The other one didn't. It seems that um, honey is actually beneficial on many levels. I'm sure you can abuse it like anything else. But so far, it's been very beneficial. Mm. So we have uh, tea with honey, stuff like that. Honey is getting digested in the mouth almost automatically. It's far less digestion uh, than uh, other stuff, but it's better and heavier than having pure sugar. Why? Because honey is made by bees. Yeah. So it's almost, it's not a fruit, duh, but it's almost like a fruit in that sense. Yeah, right, yeah. You well, know what I mean? So before training, I, I usually have that as well tea with honey right so we, we could see about keeping that around training and see what happens i'm not there yet right now i'm having uh tea throughout the day because i have so many calls so many times for work yeah. it helps me a lot and so far i'm always I've, it's not making i'm not getting any fat out of the honey but my strength production is way way up so you think it boosts your testosterone right well, let me go the other way i think not having enough was lowering my testosterone levels mm -hmm. and me being to a, a better uh, better baseline has brought my testosterone uh, higher. I don't know that for a fact because I didn't test. I don't do any of that testing. But looking at my performance lately, how I feel and remembering the Paul Anderson diet, it makes a lot of sense to me. Paul Anderson was like all protein all the time, but he also had like a pint of honey a day. Uh, obviously, the guy was 365, 380 at 5'6". So he was a humongous faga, but also one of the strongest men ever. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was always big and he, Paul Anderson, just Google him. Um, He's strong as... Right, but he didn't do like massive amount of rice or stuff like that. Because him, he had a liquid diet because he had digestive issues because he had kidney issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's an entire thing there as well. But I am noticing that uh, I have some fruits, but really I'm going toward honey naturally. And it's working really well. Yeah. And if I can have honey, honestly, like I don't need other carbs. With yeah. honey, I'm fine. But I do feel like I'm sleeping a little bit better lately. I don't have it at night, obviously. And maybe I'll keep it around. Uh, for now, I'm going to keep it like that and see if I have a natural evolution toward keeping it around training. Yeah. But so the difference for me, uh, um, I would say from before, is that I have more uh, honey during the day than I used to and a bit less fats. But I'm also not in Europe, I'm in Rio, where it's hot, we're in summer, and we're very active and always outside. That is, that is also part of why we're doing things the way we are. I don't know that if we were stuck in Amsterdam in winter, we would eat the same. I, I can tell you we would not. Mm -hmm. So you also have to understand that the protocol is not just based on, uh, for example, the mental clarity of uh, Janena and my overall feeling of strength. It's also based on our environment. That matters a lot. This and is something you'll have to take into consideration. Yeah, and that's, well, and that's the thing with fasting, and I don't know if that's personal or that it's just for, for people in general, um, but I don't know if when I started the protocol I would be ready for fasting like I am now. Probably not. Because the, the clarity it gives you, it makes you also answer certain questions and it makes you uh, think about your own behavior very differently and, and I think but um, that's a very good point and thinking about sorry if you can hear the dogs in the back they're going nuts uh, it's very important that you understand that uh, the protocol is not an eight week thing like we're starting the new protocol on April 15th uh, you can go on the website by the way to uh, sign up right away um, but understand that this is to start you on the protocol or to keep you on the protocol to, so that you can learn some more. But learning about your own behavior will take you six months, a year, two years. I had people really that now are starting to master their own protocol, but it took them a year and a half, two years because your behavior will change, environment is different, and you need to learn about yourself throughout the whole process. So uh, when, when I... Uh when we talked about that, about how I felt during fasting, you said it was very similar for you then um, when you did No Fix November, right? Right, it was pretty much that. No Fix November, but No Fix November was, 
Uh, I had the same feelings you did. Yeah. No fixed November. What I liked about it was it made me question why I was training, how I was training. Like That's anything I did I not, I could not force myself to do anything because I had no caffeine, no carbs. So like the whole like getting, you know, like, you know, it is like pre-workout, right? You want to go train, you take a coffee. Well, I didn't have that. So suddenly, unless I was being inspired by training, I was not training. So suddenly it forced me to look at what I was doing and go, well, if you're not inspired, if you don't want to go to the gym ever until you force yourself, then maybe you're not doing what you want to do mm -hmm. or should be doing, however you want, you know what I mean? So, and, and you're going to see that a lot. And that, that, that's something I want to talk about, like, uh, this year, as I discovered that whole idea about, you know, making things into an event is I train much better right now because I have the focus on when am I going to train heavy. But if today I feel like I can't give 100% and then I'll do, I'll do more like my uh, muscle capacity stuff so that when it's time to go heavy, it's just, it's the focus point of my week. Just like at my old gym, I had the Saturday session, right? Stuff like that. And everything was leading to that Saturday session. Just like your fasting, everything is leading to dinner then suddenly dinner matters and you're having your protein. Suddenly when I lead my week like that, training heavy matters. Yeah. That makes me happier. That's a better behavior for me. But if you look, we are going, even society-wise, exactly the other way. Bodybuilding is like you eat six times a day the same thing. You train every day the same thing, every day the same training, every day the same food, every day the same life. If every food is the same, then none of them matter. You can't do the same thing over and over and keeping it. You have no favorite food if you eat it three times a day. It won't be your favorite food anymore because you have it all the time. It'll be, it'll be just a food. Right. And if you look, most people's life is just a life because they have no events into it. Life is a bunch of moments with stuff in between. People don't think like that anymore. For them, life is you know, nine to five, going to work, eating the same way, training the same way. But if you train like that, it doesn't it make sense that everybody paces everything now? Because every training is the same. It doesn't matter the movements that you do. You're doing the same workout because you're pacing the same way. Like they all want a 30, 40 minute workout with the running, with the airline or something. So you switch airline to, it's the same workout. And you're getting exactly the same thing mentally out of that workout. And if you look, that's what you see more and more. People want the same day over and over and over again. They want Groundhog Day, which I'm sure you don't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Bill Murray, you all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, anyway, it's a guy who's stuck in the loop where he has to live the same day over and over again, but he's conscious of it. So every morning he wakes up at six in the morning and it's Groundhog Day and he just can't get out of that loop. And he spends maybe a hundred years in it. Mm -hmm. But every day he learns some, and eventually he learns about himself correctly and he starts to move forward in life and then then there's a woman in it because there's always a woman in it because at the end it was about a woman like it always is um, but the point is in a weird way that's what people want they want us coaches to define for them a groundhog day mm -hmm. this is how you're going to train this is how you're going to eat this is what you're going to do and you're going to do the same thing every single day yeah which I is if, see this is where life is taking you now we can go at by the way the whole like that the whole woke communist idea like we all we exist not as an individual but as a group it's a little bit the same idea it's that dilution of the individuality that you start to see in training and nutrition so the protocol is the opposite of that the protocol is far more a you finding your own individualism into it who you are and what you need to do and I, that's exactly what Janina did with fasting because that's not what I do but yeah. for you it works better yeah. and for you and is what you need to do yeah and it's find your protocol yeah exactly but that's also like um, maybe a good inspiration for people is that even I'm soon to be your wife I can't just copy what you're doing mm -mm. and just apply it to me of course it worked for me even when we did the protocol in Amsterdam I still got a lot of benefits out of it but how I feel now I feel like I this is my way of doing it. you, you know? cannot cross the same river twice because you are not it's not the same river and you are not the same man and so the protocols the protocol is an evolving thing it it's is. just what we try to do as we go is we try to find to see if we and can get the better of both of everything that we study can we get the good part of that and try to let go of the bad part well yeah and uh, you say uh, you told me many times that when people don't know fix november they either 
switch sports or or leave their their no their not all the time but it has happened that some people have left their jobs and wives <laughs> on, on a fixed november which was really not the point no but, but it has happened once or twice let's say once or twice yeah okay. You might make me sound like a cult leader, but no, yeah. No, 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 that's not what I mean. But it's a good cult. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. I mean that it makes you answer certain questions. And mm -hmm. um, if you're not ready to answer those, maybe you're not at that state of... of and that's okay. Well, because maybe you have others project. to answer first. Yeah, I mean, but, so, exactly. but, but this is so an important all, part about nutrition. Yeah, exactly. It will always evolve and always change as you yeah. are, right? and it will. Uh, and as you get leaner, things will change. But the, what I want to stress during the next group for the protocol is that idea of inflammation that I talked about. Inflammation right. is that's anxiety, stuff like that. That's a very, very important part. And that's what I want really that the, the eight week module to be about is the protocol inflammation, how to reduce it. Why does it matter? Right. And how do we go at it? So there there'll be different ways we're going to do a protocol that is the typical strong fit one but we're going to go one that is more fasted mm -hmm. that's the Janina's one we'll do one that is more um, like a Paul Anderson diet and one that is more like a carnivore diet adapted uh, with the with the strong with the strong fit principles and I would ad I would I would suggest in general that you choose one adapt it with the principles and then follow it for a while and see how you change through it because I think the your nutrition should match your state. Right. But your state, not just how you feel that moment, is where you are in in that aspect. I, th I think I think it's the only way to be um, consistent with a way of eating, a way of training, is that if it matches where you are as a person. Otherwise, you'll either you won't give your full or you just quit. I mean, that, that, and that's a part, unfortunately, that I think gets lost in the nutrition aspect where everybody is always so bent on convincing everybody that the way they do it is the best way because molecule. Like if you look at the, the game changer when the guy went on Joe Rogan, that's all he said. And then the uh, Dr. Saladino went uh, on the Joe Rogan podcast and kind of did the same thing. Like uh, you should have meat because plants do that. And the other dude was like, you should have plants because meat, meat do that. They had the same argumentation from the opposite side. So I disagree with both. Now, I like what uh, I've, I've, I've uh, listened to a lot of what uh, uh, Sal Dr. Saladino has to say on the carnivore diet. And there's a lot of stuff I, I, that I like. But it's when they start to go into molecule that I, I'm out. And I mean, like that functional segregation, I think is far too reductive when it comes to nutrition. I think there's, uh, we still don't fully understand a lot of stuff because I think a lot of things has, has to do with behavior, the gut flora and things like this. So, but what we can do is take the, the good out of all this and that anti-inflammatory uh, insulin spike idea and, uh, that, that, that he's talking about, I find is uh, very much on the money. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, yeah. yep. And that I wanted to add one more thing is that with the fasting, you'll. Um, and no. Sorry? Because the microphone won't oh. pick you up. Yeah. Is that you start to realize what hu being hungry is? Again, not right. fully hungry because I will not starve, but I mean, like, what, what, what is hunger? What is boredom? What is lack of energy? And what is right. lack of motivation? Or don't want to do something? That's a very good point. And. They're not the same? Because I can start slowly but surely start to understand better and better what I feel at certain moments, and then I can. Uh, control my anxiety with that a lot better because I'm like I can just talk with myself better because mm -hmm. there is no uh, fix that yeah. will help me fix the problem or will help me cover up the problem so it's like well why do I don't want to do this or why do I don't have should I energy? do this so yeah why yeah. should I do and this by and the way, do I have, why yeah. don't I have the energy to do this or and you're supposed to be hungry once in a while it's right. not bad for you it's not bad for you. No, all day long. Don't starve yourself all day long. But at the same time, being hungry is a normal part of the human condition. Yes, and it's also it's good to get to dinner with a with a growling stunning stomach where you go like, yes, I want to eat. Yeah. By the way, and that's easy to do. Just eat more in the morning, and then give yourself four or five hours of not eating before dinner. I do that a lot actually. I have no solid food between like three and dinner because then I get to dinner and then I want to have protein, which of course makes me sleep better. And so they, they, there's, you know what I mean? Like they, they, they are ways to do it mm -hmm. that is timing based. That, that 
that based on the nervous system and the way uh, human beings work, that seem to me to, to be far better. Yeah. Well, any last words? Well, is there something I forgot? Because usually I'm not the one who, who talks, so I don't know. If I no, but we explain, we explain your uh, protocol. So let's do it this way. If you have any questions for Janina on how she's implementing fasting, yeah. Bring it on, and then we'll do a podcast episode on that. And do you want to still touch on the body positivity? Uh, Wait, I forgot about the body positivity. Yeah, yeah, before we go, I want to touch about this. So, Janina has to do a photo shoot when we go to uh, Holland next week. And she's, she, uh, her agent calls her a woman, not a man. And tells her, look, if you're going to be that muscular, I can't book you anymore. Well, she said it a bit nicer, but... Yeah. yeah, but that's what she said. And so it turns out that the photo shoot was for a vegan brand whose owner is a woman and is a very much a progressive woman. <laughs> vegan, progressive. I well, can't not, she, she, used, she was like, it's more like I was booked for two shoots, uh, a sports shoot and a lingerie shoot. And um, she asked me like, oh, do you really look like the pictures you've been posting on Instagram? And I'm like, well... I think I that's worse than what I said, but okay. No, l just let me yeah. explain. So, yeah. um, so she, so I'm like, yeah, that's what I look like. Of course, I, I make certain poses and I, I flex a little bit, but yeah, I'm, I'm more muscular. And she's like, well, I think it's a bit too harsh for lingerie. And I'm like, that, that it's totally European. It's my choice to look the way I look. And I really like the way I look. I'm very happy with the way I look. But if it's not fitting, fitting your um way of of your brand and the way you do the shoes i completely respect that and i don't it, it should be your right to not book me if i would gain totally. 10 kilos of fat you you would it would be your good right to cancel me for that right but they wouldn't and and that's that's my problem of course they have the right to not book yeah, you and that's that's obviously you, i'm a model you make pictures of what you obviously see. but I and so she was like oh then I, will, I was like i will give you option i come to the to the job if you don't like the way i look in lingerie i'll just do the, the lingerie underwear to be honest uh i'll do the sports shoot and then i will just uh invoice you for half the day instead of a full day um and she was like yeah i respect that you you look the way you look but it's just uh it looks just very harsh in underwear okay but i'm like it's just yeah, I know, but she's, she's... Imagine if if she had said that because you had gained 10 kilos I know, of fat. But uh, first of all, it's a um, reality of doing any type of modeling work. I accept that fully and I'm not complaining about that at all. It's a, a very inclusive brand and they use especially a vegan uh, makeup artist who only use vegan products and I completely respect that. But what I Kay. do uh, hope changes is that we don't we all want to see pro powerful women right why don't we love to see don't look at me no but i mean like in general i think this movement is completely nuts I, we all want to see body women positivity is complete and bullshit we all want to see powerful women why can't the wim a woman have muscle and show no, but look what you said why, this is why, why is it harsh to have muscle you just said this is an mm -hmm. inclusive brand i've seen the brand they have uh pudgy models all shapes of of Women. Right, so they have women that are on the fat side, not obese, but they are like, uh, you know, they have extra kilos. That's not harsh. But you show a lean and muscular, that's harsh. How is that an inclusive brand? Or so if that is, and again, it's a vegan uh, well, makeup no, artist. Yeah. Using vegan products, the owner of the brand is super progressive. And again, they have chubby models, that's okay. But you show up with a crossfitter type body and it's not. And so this is why I say body positivity is complete bullshit. You have the right to be fat, you just don't have the right to be fit. But, but it's I fit shaming and it's been happening more and more. And you know what I, what I said in a conversation exactly that? I love the way I look. I'm very happy with my muscles and I feel strong. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah. No, I, feel I have the strong right to be pissed at the, at the hypocrisy and, and I of those people. I will lose money because i look the way i look i accept that completely and it's her complete right yes to, that's true that's not what we're talking about because i changed from that the, is from not the what we're talking about me. but i do think it's a shame 
that muscular women are but not... But then it's not inclusive now, no, is exactly. it? All right, are so that's my... Of course, inclusive. they have the right to cancel if they want to. They don't have to book you if they don't want to. It's a company. They yeah. do exactly, exactly what, they what they want. What you can't do then is call yourself an inclusive company yeah. and give me that bullshit vegan makeup thing. Because... And call yourself an inclusive company with, an inclu with a progressive women owner. Do you understand how much women have criticized men for saying, oh, I, uh, men say I'm too muscular or whatever. First of all, I don't know. I'm sure there's men that say that, but it's definitely not a majority. And stop listening to the assholes, listening to some of us that love muscle, muscle on the woman. And second of all, it turns out women do the exact same stuff. That body positivity is just another way for women to criticize other women. Yeah, and it's being used as be, such anyway. To be honest, I think it's. I like. I want to become more muscular. I think I'm still yes, too skinny. I'm all for it. I, I really want to become more muscular I'm all because for it. I want to walk around and be a statement to to that movement. Going like, yes, I have muscle. And but that's maybe, the thing. You're not part of the movement. No, but I mean like not part of the movement as in that sense. But I they, mean like they are not making you part of the movement. Yes, but I mean like not part of the movement as in that sense. But I mean like I I rather walk around being a statement of I, I I'm agree. a strong woman than being... I agree. I just want to, ladies really? to understand out there that this is not a man's stuff, that men don't oh, criticize yeah, women for yeah, muscle. For sure. It's a society stuff. Like body positivity means it's okay to be fat. It's just not okay to be fit. I don't, which is weird well, because the only reason CrossFit got famous is because the women and the dudes look so beautiful. So I find it that is such a weird thing well, happening it's, it's right now. World. The CrossFit word in the, it's the not the progressive, world is yeah, not it's the not a progressive, world. inclusive stuff. No, but that tells you what that body positivity is about. Don't put it on men. It's on both sides. Even There's though, assholes on both sides. Even though in the fitness I f industry, I feel like every type of body is accepted. If you train hard, no, like... No, they're the same way. They just, no, f powerlifters are fat. It's just, no, but I mean, that's it makes I'm you saying. stronger. Who cares? I'm saying yeah. like all types of bodies are seen in the fitness industry. Oh, yeah, if you train sure. hard, yeah. all good. Why can't we do that overall? You know what I mean? But and that's my problem because we are getting worse and worse at it. My problem is when we say body positivity only works one way. It the does. hypocrisy of it a does. progressive vegan makeup artist uh, company that that says like, uh, "Do you look like that now?" I found that confounding. I found the f that right. I wanted to say something about it because I found that such a description of the world today mm -hmm. where we we f this is 1984 George Orwell where there's a part of the book where he actually writes about the capacity of people to um, talk about something forget it in a second and remember it a second later this is exactly that where people will tell you body positivity we have to uh, ask everybody the second letter says but you're too muscular and the second letter say oh by the way we have a vegan makeup artist yeah, this is 1984. This is why I'm pissed because this has been predicted a long time ago. In 1984, that was written before, obviously. So 50 years, right? Predicting exactly where we are. Do you know where this goes? This is the fall of the Western civilization. This is one of the many facets that is showing where we are heading. The capacity of people to have a set of principles towards something like body positivity, like they'll cancel people over that shit. A second letter, forget about it. A second letter, remember it. And they're doing that with such a facility. It is so easy now to do that. They do it like, we forgot COVID. There's Ukraine, we forgot COVID. Ukraine is gonna go into a ceasefire. You'll see, they, they won't let go because now, they, now COVID is Putin. And it's gonna be the same talk about Putin the way we talked about COVID and now people forgot about COVID. So now we don't have masks, everything is going to go away like it never existed. The capacity, of, and then it'll bring, they'll bring it back in another form. And then forget it and then bring it back. That tribalism, capacity to forget and remember things that have such drastic changes in society is a bad sign. Yeah. That's why I get upset at shit like that because I'm like, is that where we are? And but again, I don't blame the company because... I don't blame the company at all. That's why I said I will show up that day looking the way I look and you can decide if I can, if I can stay for two jobs right. or for one job. But because yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I'm not happy what this means about society, but I am happy what this means about myself as an individual. That you're jacked. That I'm fucking jacked. Yeah, exactly. I'm but happy the, about it. But like, I can only I imagine the uproar if she had said that because you had gained weight. Yeah. 
And I, That's, I just find it ridiculous. But I, I'm more than willing to accept this. I have no problem. I'm happy she said it even about for me, but not for a society. On a principal's perspective, for I am me? deeply troubled yes. by what I see. With, from a principal perspective, it's, it's terrifying and it's insane. Right? That we cannot we can agree on that. But it's the, but for me, it's the I forgetting, happy. remembering, forgetting, remembering as such with such a facility and speed that like worlds over action, when you start to get into a society that has such a power of world over action, you are in this is how Rome fell. If but you like history, like it's this is the fall of the Western civilization. Like we're just witnessing it first hand. It's literally saying all, all women are beautiful, every shape is beautiful outside Depends. of the fit, fit ones. Depends. De no, outside of the one I judge to be so. Yeah. So, because, yeah, don't get me yeah, wrong, he can be fit tomorrow, but then he'll be that. He used to be black, he used to be fat, and now it's fit, and now you're just switching the stuff. Yeah. You just have a thing that now fat is good, even though for health reasons it's really harmful. That doesn't matter anymore, but now fit is weird. And then, that's okay, we talked enough. <laughs> did I say, did I, was, was yeah. I? Okay.